Peace and blessings, everyone. Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. How are you all doing this evening? Let me get set up. I apologize for my tardiness. I had a meeting that ran a few minutes over and I'm trying to hurry up and get to my group or get to my, my peoples, my peoples that need this information. So my name is Tamara T. Bush and I'm hopping on Facebook Live during the month of March, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, to provide clarity on consumer law. So go ahead and share out this broadcast um, to anyone, anyone at all that you think can benefit from this information. Anyone at all that can benefit from this information, invite them to these broadcasts because I'm gonna continue to share and provide clarity as I understand it. Um, how I comprehend it in hopes that it will provide assistance to you in your situation. In your situation, let me pull my hat up a little bit. There's a bit of a shadow. All right, so go ahead and get things going. Let's go ahead and get it going. There's a specific definition that I want to cover this evening. Um, let's see. All right, I think we're good now. I think we are good. Go ahead and put a one in the chat if you can see me, if you can hear me. Um, put a one in the chat and go ahead and drop your city and state so that I know where you're tuning in from. Drop your city and state. All right, here we go. How is everybody doing this evening? I'm looking for you all to let me know how it's going. How have you been doing with the information that I've been providing? Um, because I wanna be able to make sure that I'm giving you what you need, right? And I wanna make sure that um, you know, the information that I'm providing is giving you some sort of value, right? Is it giving you value? Is it sort of opening up your mind where you can begin to look at things differently? Because you, you, you all will hear me say this and I'll say it multiple times. Sometimes when we're learning new information, we have to unlearn what we think we know, right? And so we have to sort of upgrade or up date the software of the mind the same way that we update the software on our computer and on our phone. Um, because if you'll come to find that if you do not update your software or your computer on your phone, it's going to cause that device to not function the way that it is supposed to function. Right? So the manufacturer of those devices push out certain updates to ensure um, the continued functionality of those items, right? Of those devices. But when God is trying to push certain updates into our psyche, into our spirit, into our mentality, we reject those updates, right? Because we have free will. So it's not automatic for us. We believe that we have the right to choose what information we you know, adapt to and what information we don't adapt to. But the thing was that with that is that we have to be able to recognize when God is placing people in our life to provide certain information, right? And so what does that look like? I was having a conversation with my cousin earlier today and she's like, man, I was on Clubhouse. Somebody was talking about consumer law. Basically what she was saying is that this subject, it just kept coming up. It just, it kept coming up. And so then when she saw me begin to talk about it on Facebook, she was like, okay. It was like confirmation for her. And so we have to pay attention to those signs. We have to pay attention to those signs because they are, I don't believe in coincidences at all. I don't believe in coincidences. Everything is strategically done. So we have to be able to recognize when God is sending us information and people that's going to benefit us, right? But I'm not going to get on my soapbox. 
So I want to hear from you. How has the information been? How has it been? How's it been? Have you had a chance to look up any of these laws? Have you went back and reread any of the any of the US code, the, the statutes that I've dropped? Um, we've been at this since March the 1st. And so I'm interested to see your feedback. Has this been beneficial for you? Right? So drop it in the comment section. Drop it in the comment section. So tonight, I want to go ahead and cover. A simple definition is, is very simple. Um, just to sort of give you, you know, just a little bit more clarity, just a little clarity. Because when I began to teach about consumer law, the one thing that I said from the beginning is that we have to pay attention to the definitions. The definitions is going to help aid our understanding. So we have to pay attention to the definition, right? Y'all know, listen, I've been working hard. I ain't even had time to do my hair today. <laughs> I tell you, I've been working so hard. I was just telling my colleague, I was like, I'm trying not to be walking around here looking like a zombie because my brain, my brain is, it's a lot, it's a lot. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm not gonna keep y'all too long on this tonight. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a quick lesson. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Go ahead and put a three in the chat. Um, if you can see my screen, put a three in the chat for me. Put a three in the chat if you can see my screen. And I'm gonna uh, try to follow along to ensure that I can, if you do all drop any comments, um, that I can see your comments, right? I have a, I have you all pulled up on my phone. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. If my phone's gonna act right. Okay, now this is an important definition that I want to cover today. This definition is coming out of this. This is still all Title 15. It's still all Title 15, right? This is 15 USC 78M. This particular section of Title 15 deals with securities, right? Um, securities exchanges. Now, the one thing that I find about US code is that you have to, every separate statute is not going to provide a definition of the word, even though it makes reference to the word in the statute. So anytime that you see a word defined, but you don't see it defined somewhere else, then it's safe to say that we can use the definition of the word as defined in whatever section that we're reading, right? So for this particular section, I wanted to talk about the definition of the word payment. I want to talk about the definition of the word payment, right? So I'm just going to click on this definition. Let me make sure this. Um, actually, I think I already have it pulled up. Okay, I already have it pulled up. This is some of my notes, right? Okay. So, and again, this is 15 USC 78M. And I pulled this up on Cornell Law, which is a legal information institute. So you can literally type in 15 USC 78M and it's gonna take you to Cornell Law. Okay, so the term payment means a payment that is made to further the commercial development of oil, natural gas, minerals, and not de minimis, and includes taxes, royalties, fees, including these fee, including license fees, production entitlements, bonuses, and other material benefits that the commission consistent with the guidelines of the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, right, to the extent practicable, determines are part of the commonly recognized revenue stream for the commercial development of oil, natural gas, and minerals. Okay. Um, question. Do you see anything in here about a payment for a loan? Do you see anything in here about a payment for a credit card? Do you see anything in here about a credit for a utility? It specifically says commercial development of oil, natural gas, or minerals. It says commercial. Now, if I've been teaching you this whole time that we are a consumer, that means we're a natural person. There's nothing commercialized about us being a consumer. So why is the definition of the term payment specifically talking about oil, natural gas, or minerals, right? Okay, 
So when you when when you receive a statement in the mail and they say that you have a payment due, what payment? A payment for what? A payment to whom? They're very crafty in how they put together their monthly statements to give you the impression that a payment is due to them. But in essence, when you really read the statement, does it really say that a payment is due to them or do you just assume that a payment is due? And so in law, we cannot assume. There's no room for, ass for assumption. We have to go with what we know. And the law specifically states that the definition of the term payment is made to further the commercial development of oil, natural gas, or minerals. I know what you may be thinking, okay, well, oil, that may be oil or natural gas, that, is that my gas bill? Is that my gas bill? Because that's, that's what I would think, right? When it says natural gas, I'm like, well, wait a minute. I'm, is that my gas bill? But it says commercial development. It says commercial development. So unless there's, there's a, a, a project out there that you know that your gas company is involved in, where your payment is specifically going towards the commercial development of something that they're working on, how does this apply to you? How does the term payment apply to you as a consumer? How does it apply? It does not apply. So when you receive your statements, you literally have to challenge everything. You literally have to challenge everything. I'm gonna take you back to another definition here. Hold on one second. I want you all to, to read this and I want you to read it multiple times while I pull up this other information because it's, 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 it's so applicable. When I tell you it is so applicable, but the problem is, is that because we don't know what we're supposed to be looking at, we automatically assume and they allow us to assume that a payment is due to them, whoever the company is that's sending us the bill. Right? A payment that is made to further the commercial development. It's completely insane. And this is why I say the legal, legal language is a language inside of a language, right? So when we were in school, they taught us to look for like context clues and read the whole sentence so that you can get the context of, of the phrase and the information that's being relayed to you so that you can understand the meaning of what is being relayed to you. Um, but when you're reading the legal language, you literally have to know the definition of each word to know exactly what they're saying. A payment does not apply to you. How can you pay something that you do not owe? That's why there's no definition of the payment because there is no debt that you owe. The debt falls on the United States. All obligations, public and private, belongs to that of the United States. That's 18 USC 8. You can look it up. So these companies have made it, a, made it their job to manipulate the language to fit their narrative, right? And the, and the, and the crazy thing is, is that we fell for it <laughs> because we didn't know any better. We didn't know any better. Yes, Nikki, I'm telling you, reread, re-listen, to the information, yes, share it with your family. Yes, 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 yes. You have got to share the information. You gotta share the information. I don't know if you all were able to, to check out the interview that I did earlier um, on uh, TV Access 21, it's a station. Um, well, it's, it's Spectrum Channel 21 um, in North Carolina, right? And so um, I specifically talked about the fact that when we're looking to create generational wealth, it's not just about the money. The information is also a form of wealth that we have to pass down to the next generation, right? And so literally when we die, it's like there's a reset button if we did not pass down what we knew and gained um, and the wisdom that we have when we were here. Our children literally have to try to figure it out all again from scratch all over again. So all of our life's work is down the drain. 
right? Dr. Miles Monroe says that the graveyard is the wealthiest place on earth because a lot of people's dreams, aspirations, and information and wisdom die with them when they die. And so we have to be intentional about providing information like this because it is literally your life. It's their life. It's their life. It is literally their life. But wait, I'm about to pull up this other information because when I tell you, I need you all to see this. I need you to see this. So what is some of the information that you've had to revisit that it's like you, you, you heard me talk about it or a question came up in your mind where you weren't quite clear? Drop it in the comment section if there is something that I've covered over the last 22 days, because we started this on March the 1st, that you would like for me to expand on or expound on, right? Drop it in the comment section. And I'm pulling up this information for you all now. Because this is important. We need to know what this means, right? These laws, I'm telling you, <laughs> these laws will blow your mind. They will literally, literally blow your mind. There it is right here. Oh, let's see. Yep, here it is right here. All right, let's see. All right, here we go. And let me know, put a four in the chat if you can see on your screen, public utility. All right, okay. So what is a public, public utility? A public utility is an entity that provides goods or services to the general public. Public utilities may include common carriers as well as corporations that provide electric, gas, water, heat, television, cable system. In some contexts, the term public utility may be defined to include only private entities that provide such goods or services. For example, and then they give some examples, right? All right. The process of determining whether an entity is a public utility varies by jurisdiction. In Ohio, public utility is not defined generally in Ohio Constitution, and the Ohio Supreme Court has held that definitions elaborated in a particular statutes are not applicable. Okay, so let's back up for a second. Okay, the general public. This is important right here, the general public. Common carriers. Common carrier is a person or a commercial enterprise that transports passengers or goods for a fee and establishes that their service is open to the general public. The reason why I'm reading this definition is because I'm trying to, to point out the fact that it does not say anything about a consumer using a public utility. A public utility is something that's provided to the general public. So what that means is that service will continue to provide it to the general public, regardless if you pay the bill or not pay the bill because the United States needs to have these utilities in place for the general public to take advantage of it. And it, it's, it's, it's described as a public utility. You are a consumer, you are a private natural man, natural woman. This is a public utility. Are you a public person? Or are you a private person? Are you a private consumer? This does not apply to you. So explain to me why we're paying for utilities. Explain to me why we're paying for anything, especially when the definition of the payment has nothing to do with us. It says commercial development of oil or natural gas, right? I, I didn't make this up. That's what the definition says. And it's crazy because sometimes when we read things, we, 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 
we sort of kind of put our own uh, definitions on things to make it fit what we think we know instead of reading the word. It's sort of kind of like the Bible. You know how people pick and choose certain parts of the Bible that sounds good so that they can quote it. But they don't live by those standards and they pick and choose certain parts of the Bible to fit their narrative, but they miss the context of the full chapter. But they want to pick up these little sentences that 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 sound good. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. So explain to me that because we're not supposed to be paying these utilities, right? Anything really, anything. If we were supposed to be paying these utilities, then why does the FCC, why does the FCC, which is the entity that regulates these utility companies, I'm trying to move the screen over, but my computer is giving me difficulty right now. Okay. So tell me, why the FCC has a complaint section. Now, I need y'all to pay attention to this. Pay attention. When I'm reading these definitions, there is a reason why you are being consistently called a consumer over and over and over and over again. Why does it say consumer complaint? Consumer complaint. Why does it say that? We have got to begin to identify ourselves as a consumer, right? Now, the other day I went over billing error disputes, okay? So what is the FCC telling us? If your complaint is about a telecom billing or service issue, we will serve your complaint on the provider. Your provider has 30 days to send you a response to your complaint, we encourage you to contact your provider to resolve your issue prior to. Okay, now, when we are submitting our disputes, we have to know when to go and tell on these companies that we're sending our complaints to. Everybody has a boss. We just have to keep that in mind, right? Everyone has a boss. Okay, who's the boss of the consumer reporting agencies, i.e. the credit bureaus, because we love to call them credit bureaus, even though there's nothing federal about them. Okay, the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau is the boss of the consumer reporting agencies. Okay, so the FCC is the boss of these utility companies. Right? All of the banks have bosses, they have regulators all of the banks, the credit unions, the banks, they all have regulators. So we have to use these regulators, i.e. the bosses as leverage to get them to do what they're supposed to do. So if I'm telling you, literally, literally just told you <laughs> what the definition of a payment is, I described to you um, what a public utility is. There's nothing private about it. Basically, what this is saying is that corporations are the only ones that are supposed to be paying for utilities. The private person, man or woman, is not supposed to be paying utilities. We are private. We're consumers. We are natural men and women, okay? So if you are not supposed to be paying the utilities, submit your billing dispute and file your complaint. Submit your billing dispute, file your complaint. TV, phone, internet, radio, anything that you don't see listed here goes under emer emergency communications. It is time to be begin to hold these corporations responsible. And your basis is always gonna go back to 18 USC 8. 18 USC 8, all debts public and private belong to the United States, right? I didn't make this up, I, I'm, I'm just reading the law. <laughs> I'm literally just reading the law. That's what the law says. 18 USC 8, obligation or other security of the United States defined. What does it include? 
literally everything. All obligations includes all. All means everything, bonds, everything. They lay it all out here. All of it. So what bills do you owe? Please. What bills do you owe? Hey, Robert. Hey, Excel. Hey, Stephanie. Thank you for joining. I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm just here to provide clarity. <laughs> I'm just here to provide clarity. That is it. And the thing of the matter is, is that certain information we're going to have to read over and over and over to really, really understand what's going on because it's a lot going on. And, you know, these big corporations, they are very crafty when it comes to constructing their paperwork. And so, like I said before, you pay the bill because you because they, they use words like payment and due. And then they threaten you and say, oh, well, if you don't pay by this day, you're gonna get a late fee or we're gonna shut your service off, right? They cannot shut off your service because you refuse to pay. When you properly submit your billing error dispute, right? File your complaint with the appropriate regulatory agency because it's not about just doing your administrative process. It is also about enforcement because you can go through the administrative process, but if you don't know how to enforce, then everything that you would have done would have been in vain. So we're gonna begin talking more about, and this is gonna be for the rest of the month, we're gonna be focusing on liability, how to identify the liable parties in a consumer credit transaction. Who holds the liability is what we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna circle back through Truth in Lending, the Fair Credit Reporting Act, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And I'm gonna highlight for you the liability section of these codes and then give you the regulatory agency that is responsible for governing these companies. Because what's, what's gonna end up having to happen is that you're gonna have to get your own spreadsheet going of all of your bills, right? Who regulates who? You're gonna need to have addresses of all these companies, their billing address, their payment address, the address for the CFO and the address for the register agent. The register agent of any company is the person or entity that is responsible for receiving legal correspondence on behalf of this company Monday through Friday. Legal paperwork, if they're being sued or served. So the register agent is sort of kind of like the legal representative of that company, right? But with the bigger corporations, usually the register agent are the attorneys. The register agents are the attorneys. So when you're serving this sort of paperwork, you have to notify the register agent of what's going on because usually the register agents are the ones that can cut your check. So I'm gonna give you some homework. You have homework today because we've been going at this since March the 1st and I want to be able to see some movement for you. That's the whole reason for this, right? So your homework is for you to make a list of all of your bills, all of your bills, all of your bills, all of your bills. Don't ask me, credit card, all of your bills. What do you pay every single month? Utilities, car loans, your mortgage, cell phone, everything, 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 everything. I need for you to make a list, an Excel spreadsheet, however you need to do it, where you can properly track what you have, right? You're gonna need the billing address. I'm sorry, the billing error dispute address. If you take your statement, flip it over, look at the back of your statement, it's going to specifically tell you, I need you all to pay attention. It's going to say, if you feel as though there is an error on your bill, please send, please write us at this address. Like it's literally going to tell you what that is. So you're going to need to have that address. And you're also gonna to need to have the payment address wherever you submit your payments. I want you to go and look up the CFO for all the companies that you do business with. 
And you can do that by Googling. You can do that by Googling, right? And then you're gonna you're gonna locate the register agent. You do that by going to your Secretary of State's website and do a search for the name of the company to see if they have a register agent on file. Now, there's a reason why I'm asking you to do this because very soon, very soon, we're gonna be getting together a group where this information is going to be taught. And we're going to actually begin to go through these processes, these processes. But in order for you to get into the group, it's not going to just be about the money. It's going to be about, number one, your ability to follow instruction. And you're doing your own due diligence so that you can be vested in this. Because no one is going to be able to do this for you. You have to be able to, no one can assert your rights for you. You have to know how to assert your own rights. And part of the understanding comes in the research, right? That's where your understanding is going to come in at. So if you really start digging into your bills, get your list together, begin to read the back of your statements and see what information is there, it's going to aid your understanding as we begin to go through these processes. And so in order to get into the group, it's going to be some qualification guidelines because, you, like I said, you just, you have have to be vested. So this is just a little bit of homework, right, that I'm asking you to do um, because it, it is literally going to take you doing this for yourself. No one is going to be able to do this for you. I can't do this for you because I can't tell your story. You know your story. I know my story. I don't know your story, right? You have to be able to tell your story. So what questions do you have? I know it's a lot of information. <laughs> hey, Patricia. How are you? You all are just so quiet tonight. Where are y'all at? Where are y'all, why are y'all so shy? <laughs> why are you so shy? But yeah, so that's my lesson for this evening. I know I went over just a little bit, but this is important information. We're gonna be getting into this and it's gonna be heavy. And this is not for the weak of hearts. This is this is, is gonna require a lot of studying. So we have to do the studying. And this is the reason why I wanted to start doing this video so that you know you can take it, you can watch it, rewind it, run it back again, whatever it is that you need to do um, in order to get this information. Because if I give it to you, you won't know what to do with it and you won't. There, there's there's no value if I just give it to you, right? So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close out. Thank you all so much for joining. I appreciate you all. Um, for my YouTube subscribers, I will be uploading the rest of the content up onto the YouTube channel. Um, I got some videos from last week that I need to go ahead and upload. Thank you all so much to sus subscribing to this channel. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your engagement on YouTube. I definitely appreciate you all. Um, I will get the rest of the content uploaded. Um, now, tomorrow is going to be live, but Thursday and Friday, I'm going to be out of town. So those videos are going to be pre-recorded, but I promise you, you will still get the information. It just will not be a live broadcast, right? So I'm letting you guys know right now what's going on because I want to be fully transparent, right? So I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Nikki. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Peace and blessings. And I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>